You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to generate hydrogen using a little bit of chemistry. Today's video is going to be more chemistry related than my usual videos. So the chemical equation for this reaction is going to be as follows. Aluminum in a solid state is going to react with the hydrochloric acid. This reaction is going to produce aluminum chloride. The aluminum chloride will be an aqueous precipitate, while on the side it's going to produce hydrogen gas. As a balanced equation, it's going to be about 2 aluminum plus 6 hydrochloric acid molecules. It's going to turn into about 2 aluminum chloride molecules plus 3 double hydrogen molecules. And so anyways, that's all there is to this particular chemical equation. The first ingredient we're going to be using is aluminum foil, and the second ingredient is going to be muriatic acid. Now muriatic acid is pretty cheap and can be found at most hardware stores. In fact, I bought this whole gallon bottle for around $7. Anyways, muriatic acid is really just diluted hydrochloric acid with a few impurities. As you can see, this muriatic acid is around 31.45% HCl. Now this acid is quite strong, so make sure you're wearing chemical resistant gloves like these, as well as long sleeves. In addition to this, be sure that you're wearing goggles, because if this acid splashes you in the eyes, you'll probably go blind. Okay, so now with my goggles and gloves on, I'm going to pour some of this muriatic acid into this smaller container. After you pour it, be sure to seal up the top again so that it doesn't spill anywhere. Also note that as an extra safety precaution, I have this solution of baking soda and water over here. Basically, if I spill any of this acid onto me, I can dump this baking soda water onto me to neutralize the pH. Now I'm going to take this 500 milliliter flask, and I'm going to carefully transfer the muriatic acid into it. If you're curious, that's about 200 milliliters of muriatic acid. Anyways, I'm going to now take the rubber stopper that goes to the flask. As you can see on the top here, we have this hole that goes straight through. So I found this tubing connector that fits right in. This should create a pretty good seal going from the flask into the tube. Anyways, I have the other end of the tube attached to this bubbler I made out of an old vinegar bottle. Basically, I got another one of those tube connectors, put it in, and put two-part epoxy around it. And then on top of the bubbler, I used epoxy again to attach this black tube. Now it is very important that you do not skip the step of adding in this bubbler. Since this reaction is endothermic, it frees up hydrogen chloride gas from the solution over there. Basically, hydrogen chloride gas can be very bad for your health. In fact, just yesterday, I breathed in a bunch of hydrochloric acid gas, and so from that, my eyes became extremely bloodshot and my lungs began hurting. So when the hydrogen chloride gas comes through here and goes through this bubbler, instead it will join into the water. The water will get slightly more acidic, but when it gets up here, it should be mainly hydrogen coming out of here. Okay, so now I'm going to use this rubber band to attach the balloon to the output of the bubbler. Now, as you can see, I took some of the aluminum foil and scrunched it up into a ball. Although more surface area will make the reaction go faster, for my particular setup, the tube is so small that if I make the reaction go too fast, the pressure will build and blow the top off of the flask. So I'm going to stick to this one big piece here to see what happens. Okay, so now I'm going to add the foil to the flask, and then in a second it should start reacting. Okay, so this is the balloon I ended up with. I think it could have gotten a lot more full than this, but I stopped it a bit early. Hydrogen actually has more lifting power than helium, so you'd expect it to be floating right now. However, since I only have this much hydrogen here compared to the weight of the balloon, it's still sinking. Another property that hydrogen has is that it's extremely combustible with oxygen. Okay, so I have this torch I made to set it off, so I'm going to set the balloon in the snow over here, and then we'll light it and see what happens. Well, looking at what just happened, that was a bit smaller than I was hoping for. Anyway, so what I think actually happened is that when the balloon popped, most of the hydrogen dispersed out before it combusted. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and try it again when it gets darker with a new balloon. Okay, so that last one did turn out quite a bit better, so I think I'm going to try it one more time with another balloon. So now you know how you can use hydrochloric acid and aluminum to produce hydrogen gas. Thank you all so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see my weekly science videos, go and hit the subscribe button wherever it may be. Remember that the acid that we used in this video is extremely corrosive, and so be safe, and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to be making a cool wood desk using Lichtenberg figures and high voltage.